And welcome back to again. I'm pre-recording this because I got my schedule changed, so I can't uh, do this on Monday like I normally would. Uh, but Togera, 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 T O G E R A Godzilla. I think it's Togera. Togera Godzilla asked the question, "Who win a fight, Godzilla versus Tiamat from D and D?" Uh, and I did Ghidorah versus Tiamat uh, a good while back. Uh, and you know my thoughts on that now. Uh, there's many different versions and in interpretations of Godzilla. I'm not going to go over every single freaking one. Um, but we'll go over, like, the main... So, basically, we'll look at uh, Showa-era Godzilla, Heisei-era Godzilla, Godzilla Earth. Actually, well, no, we'll take Showa-era out, because there's really no point in that, if I'm going to be honest. Because, really, that was just weird. And Heisei... Well, quite frankly, um, Heisei-era is stronger, anyway. So, Heisei-era Godzilla. We'll look at... Um, there's also Millennium Godzilla. That we can look at too, the Millennium Era Godzilla. Then there is Godzilla Earth, there is Legendary Godzilla, there is Shin Godzilla. There's also the comics version of Godzilla. That's six different versions of Godzilla. Uh, so let's let's get over that, go through that real quick. Godzilla, depending on which interpretation you're looking at, is he is a creature born from nuclear radiation or radiation. But depending on which version you look at, he's a creature that may have has been existing. For God knows how many eons and just woken up and started wreaking havoc, or he was man-made through, you know, our own f uppery, uh, <laughs> our own fuckery. Basically, as I was trying to go with that f uppery—that's that's a weird term um, that I just made up right there. But anyway, so because of it, it, each interpretation is a little different. Now, the Heisei era Godzilla is—they um, do acknowledge that it is kind. It is a new Godzilla. And that the show era did happen. Uh, same with the Millennium series. Heisei era Godzilla was strong enough to go, strong enough to be a planetary threat, particularly when he was going into meltdown as Burning Godzilla. Heisei Godzilla was able to take on pretty much any of his kaiju foes without too much. Even Ghidorah in that generation did not pose that big a threat to him. Uh, but destroy it did. And he was only able to beat that because he was burn. Destroy it because he was burning. Uh, he was his atomic breath was enough to lay waste to countrysides. It's often said he's probably somewhere in the continental to planetary levels of durability. Uh, he tough enough to take on um, uh, missile fire uh, tanks, not without too much trouble. Even though Super Mecha Godzilla nearly killed him, absorbing the solar Rodan was able to you know boost him back up to health, enhance regeneration, enhance durability. He's extremely strong. Millennium Godzilla is the upped version of that. Very few of the Millennium series movies actually connect, except for like the uh, the Kiru, uh, the Mecha Godzilla trilogy. I believe it was a trilogy. Um, and some of them, like GMK Godzilla, isn't actually that strong, but his regeneration is nuts. We don't. I'm not doing GMK. We're doing looking at the overall kind of look of Millennium Godzilla, kind of. And that Godzilla was able to survive having a meteor hit him in the face and just walked it off. Survived a black hole going off into space and walked it off. Survived being in the epicenter of an absolute zero blast and walked it off. Like, Millennium Godzilla is nuts. But then, but that's the problem. Not Most of them aren't connected. So it's like, which one do you use? Technically speaking, Godzilla Final Wars, which is the one who tanked the meteor, is different than the Godzilla who fought the Mecha Godzilla, Kiru. And that Godzilla is still different, again, than the Godzilla that survived the black hole in space. So, again, what do you do with Millennium Godzilla? Honestly, because it's the Millennium series, we'll be fair and just kind of lump them into one being. Because that, really, when you think about that, surviving a blast of absolute zero, surviving a black hole, surviving a meter tanking, all seem within the range of them being the same Godzilla. Because that anything that that Godzilla, in any particular version of the Millennium series would have survived. It seems the other versions would have survived as well. So we'll count that as well. Legendary Godzilla, who I'll actually admit is kind of my favorite Godzilla. I think I just like his design the most. He, he seems the most, he seems the most well-designed and just, I like it. I do like the Legendary Godzilla. Durable enough to survive, basically surviving re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, survive nukes, so, uh, was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ghidorah, uh, has his atomic breath, very durable, very uh, very powerful, but he is probably the weaker amongst a lot of the Godzillas. Um, he's probably he's he's doesn't unlike say Ghidorah, whose very existence threatened the planet, causing storms. Godzilla doesn't seem to have that level of threat to him. Like his just existing isn't a problem. 
Uh, this is one of the Godzillas that has existed as a species for the longest time. Then you go into Shin Godzilla, who... Ugh, Shin Godzilla is very... Shin Godzilla actually isn't... A lot of people think, oh, he just evolves and keeps evolving and adapting and stuff like that. It's like, no, oh, yes, but that doesn't mean he would win a fight. In fact, the only, we can't really judge very well how well Shin Godzilla would do in a fight because there's no other kaiju in that movie. Now, if they had done a sequel, they do they did say that Ghidorah probably would have shown up at one point. Um, there is, like I think, even some imagery of what Ghidorah would have looked like. Uh, but Shin Godzilla is slow as hell. Now, he's durable. He is durable. Like, it took a coagulating agent, I believe, that turned him, like, into a cement statue, kind of. Like, froze him up to beat him. But he is pretty durable against most of our modern weaponry. And his uh, atomic breath, which took, took like, weeks to charge, was capable of incinerating its city in, mil in seconds. Like, it was nuts. And he was capable of firing from his tail in his dorsal plates. The problem is with Shin Godzilla is, again, A, slow, B, build up, and then cool down. He is easy, really easy to defeat in the actual fight. Then you get into Godzilla Earth, who's arguably one of the strongest versions of Godzilla, capable of blasting back King Ghidorah once he got physical form, who was a world ender capable of warping space and time back into the black holes he emerged from, capable of creating a planetary field or a magnetic field around him that repelled most attacks. Um, he, Godzilla Earth uh, is a planetary level being capable of destroying a planet if he so wanted to. But Godzilla just doesn't care. Like, Godzilla just wants to be left alone, if we're going to be honest. Uh, he, Godzilla Earth is probably one of, if not the strongest incarnations of Godzilla there is. Now, you can do, or make an argument that there's Godzilla goes to hell as well, but... The problem with the comic Godzilla is that they're all, there's so, there are many different incarnations of Godzilla in the comics. Uh, Godzilla, and God, even the writer of Godzilla Goes to Hell didn't even specify what he was fighting in hell. So it's hard, it's almost impossible to really gauge that. So, I mean, those are the Godzillas we'll be using. Tiamat is a lesser deity uh, that is kind of the not embodiment, but she is the mother of all the chromatic dragons. The red, um, the red, white, green, black, blue dragons, all of them. She is basically, she takes the force, she can take the form of a humanoid being if she wants, but she is, her main form is what you see there, a winged, five-headed, almost hydra-like avatar dragon, each of the five heads representing one of the dragons, and each of the five heads able to using each of the dragon's respective breath weapons, be it poison gas, for poison gas for green, acid for black, fire for red, lightning for blue, white, ice for white. But that's not where Tiamat's abilities stop. Tiamat is also capable of interdimensional travel. Tiamat is capable of breathing other water, even though Tiamat doesn't breathe. Tiamat is technically immortal, although Tiamat has been defeated and technically killed before. So take that for what that's worth. Uh, Tiamat is actually also capable, and this was an interesting thing I found out, of communicating with reptiles, uh, and even possibly controlling reptiles. Uh, let me get <clears throat> some more of the abilities up here right now. Um, uh, there you go. Uh, Tiamat, uh, so where, where is that reptile thing I found? Uh, da, 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 ah, stop moving. So anyway, yeah, Tiamat, Tiamat Samar, she can communicate with her worshippers within 10 miles of, uh, of holy sites and stuff like that. Not that I would matter. Can mimic any voice or sound. Again, doesn't matter. Uh, Tiamat has the ability to corrupt water, which could be your reason for her coming into contact and uh, confrontation with Godzilla. She can also charm and communicate with other reptiles she has charmed. Uh, Tiamat can extend her senses up to five locations at once and block sensing powers of deities with powers equal to or lesser than hers. She can sense anything that affects the welfare of chromatic dragons as long as the event in question affects at least 500 dragons. Uh, she is very active in the physical world, choosing to, when she chooses to leave the Astro's Domain, she usually travels in the guise of bewitching human or elven female. Several chromatic dragons of various types either accompany her. She's capable of several spells, but, you know, those are kind of like the main just, main just of her powers. And she has a poisonous uh, tail with, a uh, tail with a poisonous stinger on the end of it, too. Because she's not, because of her size, she's not good at, like, swiping, uh, swiping attacks with claws or anything like that. Uh, Tiamat is also extremely intelligent, conniving, and very evil. So, now there is one other thing I need to find out here real quick. What, how big is Tiamat? Uh, Tiamat 
with, uh, now I'm guessing it can vary because she can shape shift, but generally speaking, what is she depicted at? That's a question for her. Okay, so uh, Tima is a gargantuan, meaning that her body is a minimum, minimum occupying 20 times 20 to 20. Her bite reaches, a, okay. Uh, her tail is 25 feet long. Okay, uh, wait. The, uh, her tail has a reach of 25, meaning that her tail is 20 beyond her body. This puts her head at a minimum of 50, uh, 55 feet. I think I get what they're saying here. Um, I think, so, because they're, because they're scaling her up to, like, the D&D, like, map you would use, uh, do they give it relative size? No. Um, so, that means that her, wait, her head, oh, her head to tail length, okay, there we go, her head to tail length is about 55 feet minimum. So, actually, I mean, yes, again, she can shape shift, so maybe that's not her max size at all. But actually, Tima is actually tiny compared to Godzilla. Like if I'm if I'm reading that right, she is actually really small uh, compared to Godzilla. Let me uh, just see real quick what uh, uh, Reddit users are saying right now. I'm playing to merge, blah blah. They seem scary. Okay, Tima is a gargantuan meaning her body is a minimum occupied. Okay, they're still saying that. Ancient dragons have a bite reach of fifteen. Uh... Um, I'm not getting much else here, but yeah, apparently her head to tail length, and that, let's be clear, that's including all of her heads, is about 15, 55 feet minimum, but she can probably, extend, it's, so it's probably, she's probably much larger than that, but probably not at a hundred, she's probably not hitting a hundred feet. So let's cut the even a middleman out and say 75 feet. That still puts her well below what Godzilla, even in the smallest incarnations, is. Even if we go Showa era, Showa era was far taller than any building there was. And most buildings are a minimal, like 20 to 30 feet. And some of the bigger ones are like, you know, 50 feet, skyscrapers, all that. So she even, yeah, against most, like the biggest version, most version of Godzilla, she is small. But what she makes up for that, though, is being very highly durable. Most weapons can't pierce her skin. So she's highly durable and has a lot of different techniques and weaponry. Now, let's get out of the way right now. Can she charm Godzilla and then control Godzilla through charm? I think it all depends on the interpretation of Godzilla we're talking about. Against legendaries? Yeah, I think so. Because even though he's not like an actual lizard, he is a reptile of some kind. Like, Mothra is actually not an insect in the Legendary Universe. In fact, she's probably not an insect at all. But she is, she's a kaiju that looks like an insect. But she is herself an, her own thing. But, yeah, I'd say that Legendaries, she, yeah, she could charm. And then right off the bat, that, that ends. Although, the question does become, does Godzilla's need to keep balance or supersede that? Is he able to resist her charm? I would like to think yes, but unfortunately, because of the actual biological nature of legendaries, Godzilla, I'm going to go with no. I, I, I'm unfortunately going to go with no, because I, we don't see any magic in this universe yet, if at all we'll ever see it. I doubt we will. Aliens, we've seen. Ghidorah is an alien. They even said that. Uh, but not magic. So, unfortunately, magic against him, I don't think it's it's going to be good against legendary, which sucks, because this is my favorite version of him. Um, but legendary, no. I By the way, I'm not using Zella. Just... Zilla's his own thing. So that one, no. Against Heisei and Millennium Godzilla. Heisei, Heisei, yes. Because we know for a fact Heisei is a mutated dinosaur. And it, by that extension, kind of a reptile of some kind. Even though dinosaurs are more closely related to birds, they are still also... Birds and reptiles are actually very closely related, as it turns out. Um, so, yeah, actually, against Heisei as well, yeah, I think you could... Um, I think that could uh, that could definitely uh, be a thing, definitely. Uh, so charmed Heisei, though Heisei seemed to actually be the more angry of the angrier of the two, the more rage induced. So that rage might actually supersede the charm. But for the sake of an easier uh, match and just to get it out of the way, I think Heisei might also fall under the charm. Uh, against Millennium, though, we don't. Even though it is reptilian, Godzilla is reptilian in nature. I don't know if we could say the charm would work on Millennium Godzilla because Millennium Godzilla is kind of its own unique thing. 
Same with Shin. In fact, Malay, uh, Shin Godzilla is actually more re closely related to like an amphibian than a uh, reptile. In fact, all of the Godzillas have gills that they can breathe from, so that kind of makes them more closer to the amphibians, but we know that's not the case. Uh, they are more like reptiles than amphibians. And then Godzilla Earth, that Godzilla Earth is definitely one the charm I don't think is going to work on. Just because Godzilla Earth at that point has evolved well past reptilian. It's more like a plant monster. It, it is. Godzilla Earth is actually a plant at that point. Or part plant at any rate. So the Godzillas that we're just going to still keep in this fight now at this point are the Millennium Godzilla, Shin Godzilla, and um, Earth Godzilla. So right at the, right the gate, Shin Godzilla is going to lose. He's just going to lose. He's too slow. While he can withstand human firepower, magic and, you know, breath weapons of Tiamat and plus the manipulation and durability, I don't think it's something Shin Godzilla is really capable of dealing with. Mostly because we just, again, never saw what Shin Godzilla would do against the Kaiju. That's the real big question. We don't know what Shin Godzilla or how Shin Godzilla would really... Um, manage against another kaiju uh unfortunately shin godzilla was just really too slow and tima is extremely intelligent it would pick up on godzilla weaknesses probably picked up on godzilla charging up to use its breath weapon and therefore just pop out of the dimension real quick while godzilla just goes to town maybe observes from its astral plane which tima can do and then she pops in when he cools down and starts just beating the living snot out of him until he's nothing more than a bloody pulp so <laughs> Yeah, Tiamat actually would win that fight, I think, pretty easily, despite the fact that Tiamat's pretty small. Against Millennium and Godzilla Earth, though, Godzilla, Millennium Godzilla has shown far more durability feats than, I think, Tiamat could dish out damage. Because being able to survive at the epicenter of a black hole, being able to survive at being the epicenter of absolute zero, being able to survive a meteor taking you in the face, I don't think... Tiamat has abilities that are quite on that level. Um, and even if Tiamat does, Godzilla has tanked those abilities. I, it, Godzilla did, was injured after the Absolute Zero Blast, but he walked away from it. Uh, the other two, he tanked those things to the face. Um, and then you got to factor in Godzilla still has his own breath weapon his atomic blast, which is radiation. It's not magic or anything like that. It's not mana. It's just radiation, pure energy blast, which again, Tiamat can survive a lot. It's extremely durable. Magical artifacts can hurt it. But again, it's, it's the concept of taking someone out of their respective universe and putting them against someone from a completely different universe. You have to gauge really how well that would affect them. And I don't think we deal with radiation very much in D and D lore and concentrated energy radiation to boot so, uh, just like pure atomic beam that can melt steel and girders with ease and blow up and counteract meteors and blow them up and all that. You don't deal with radiation very much in D&D, I don't think. P correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't played D&D in a while, so correct me if I'm wrong. Now, that being said, again, Tiamat's smaller, faster, smarter, has more options. So, Tiamat would certainly be annoying Godzilla. The acid, the poison gas, would certainly be hindering Godzilla. Fire wouldn't do jack. Lightning wouldn't do jack. We've seen the fact that lightning doesn't do jack. Ice probably might slow Godzilla down a little bit, but then Godzilla just grabs Tiamat and starts beating crap out of her. Tiamat can bet. All the Tiamat can really do is retreat or then maybe come back to try to attack again. If she retreats, though, that's still a win for Godzilla because she he forced her into a retreat. So take that for what that's worth. Uh, and even if she sticks around, uh, I don't think her, her tail is going to be able to pierce Godzilla's hide, quite frankly. So the poison in her tail is not going to do much. So, yeah, ultimately, I got to go Godzilla, Millennium, Millennium Godzilla on that. And finally, Godzilla Earth, who is the largest version of Godzilla by far who is nearly a thousand feet high slash long. So Tiamat being, let's see, at max 75 feet, if my screen right now represents Godzilla, let's see if I can, okay, let me get my, okay. If my screen represents Godzilla from the top, his full height, Tiamat doesn't even come in at a tenth of his size. <laughs> and his a magnetic field can block all of her attacks. So it's one of those things where it's a raw, she's, Basically trying to move, like, move the immovable object 
and stop the unstoppable force all at once. Um, sh could she theoretically appear within his magnetic field? Sure. But that's a, that's a lot of trickiness, right? That's a lot of trying pretty hard to do that. And even then, she's still going to beat the guy who's God knows how much, uh, uh, God knows how much larger than her, like at least 10 to 15, 12 times larger than her minimum. Actually, you know, probably like 15 times larger. So then, and weighing God knows how much more than she does. Plus being hit with his breath weapon, she's not surviving that. As, as immortal as she is, she would not survive a breath, we uh, breath hit from Pl or Godzilla Earth, who was able to blow up and close black holes that Ghidorah was coming through, forcing the interdimensional planet eater back. Uh, so, yeah, Godzilla Earth would be a would be a, just a, a wall she could not get through. However, weirdly enough, let's again go through this real quick. Heisei. Millennium, um, Legendary, Shin, Earth. Um, did I miss one? I mean, you can say Showa if you want. Um, but Showa will probably lose too. Uh, that's, of the, of the five main ones I was going with, she won three out of the five because she was a, actually, she, sorry, she won, um, uh, wait a minute, no, Heisei, what am I, what am I missing? She charmed Heisei, she charmed, uh, Legendary. No, she, she won three out of the five matches because she was able to charm and manipulate two of them. Now, let's just quickly, hypothetically sake, for hypothetical sakes, say that she couldn't charm them. Would either Legendary or Heisei Godzilla beat her in a fight? Legendaries, I don't think so. Legendaries is still much larger than her, but she's got enough, and I don't think she'd be able to um, really do any damage to him. But I don't. But we actually haven't seen, besides the giant nuclear pulse he did against Ghidorah in King of the Monsters, but he, uh, which he needed aid from Mothra to do, um, we haven't really seen him do much that would imply he could beat her. Quite frankly, um, and he's durable enough to survive reentry into Earth's atmosphere. So, and he was weakened to that point. Uh, so I think that's kind of like a, a draw on that, in that vein. Like neither of them are going to really be able to beat the other, uh, because his skin is too durable for her to really get the, uh, her, uh, her tail in to poison him. And maybe the poison gas could do something, but that'd probably be the only one I'd imagine could do anything. And then Heisei, Heisei is another one where it's like, uh, He's definitely got more options than Godzilla in terms of power, because he's also got the Red Spiral Death Ray. And if we were to go Burning, then yeah, I might actually give Burning Godzilla the win on that. But if we're not going Burning, I'd say there's still a solid shot he could outright beat her. But the problem is most, almost every incarnation of Godzilla is pretty slow, where she's got a speed advantage because of her size comparatively, and can fly. And is always just smarter. She's just more intelligent. Um, so I, I might give it just for sheer power and on Godzilla's side, but that, that's a tough call on my part. I will say I'll tentatively give that to Heisei Godzilla about calling it a draw for Legendary, but it kind of is a moot point because she beat three out of five versions of Godzilla simply by charming them and controlling them. <laughs> and she beat Shin outright just because Shin can't do crap in a fight, uh, besides charging up for a few weeks going out for a few minutes and then having to cool back down. So ultimately I actually give the win to Tiamat. I do. I think Tiamat would win ultimately. Uh, but what do you think? Do you think it's Tiamat? Do you think it's Godzilla? Put in the comments below and let me know. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. As always, if you want us to review something, put in the comments below. Let us know. We'll do a review at some point. Uh, I'll be back Tuesday and Wednesday with my, it's a usual week. So stay tuned for those. Till then, thanks for watching. See you next time.